In Lesson 7, we'll be creating a two-column newsletter, but in the process, we'll review and introduce a number of different LibreOffice Writer features. We will import styles, page styles and paragraph styles, from an earlier document. We'll insert a date field. We'll see how to modify paragraph styles and how to modify page styles. We'll be importing text and pictures from the internet. Once we have some pictures in place, we'll explore how to add captions to the pictures. We'll also explore the topic of inserting a table of contents into your documents. And then we'll review again different ways to modify paragraph styles. We'll briefly touch on the topic of widows and orphans. What are they? And we'll see how to use fields to change a document title. And we'll also look at changing a page background. By the end of Lesson 7, you will have created something like this. Here we see three pages of a newsletter with a colorful masthead. The title page has a background color applied, and we've introduced a table of contents. In order to have text for our document, we'll be importing text from the internet, reinforcing the idea that in word processing, you should never type anything twice, even if someone else typed it the first time. We'll also be inserting images or pictures from the internet, and we'll see how to add a caption to the pictures. So this is our goal. Let's get started. So you can see I've started LibreOffice Writer. I used File, Save As to create a new document and named the new document Lesson 7 Newsletter. Back in Lesson 4, we created a number of different page styles and paragraph styles. Right now in this new document, using the custom styles area of the sidebar, under paragraphs you see nothing, and under page styles you see nothing. What we're going to do is we're going to import the styles that we created in Lesson 4. And to do that, we'll use the Load Styles option. And we'll check all of the options in the Load Styles dialog box. And then we'll search for the Lesson 4 file. And once we've imported those styles from the Lesson 4 document, you can now see under Custom Styles, we have the page styles that we brought in, and we have the paragraph styles that were brought in or imported from Lesson 4. I've gone ahead and double-clicked on the My First Page page style, and that opens up the header that was created that we imported from these page styles. The header contains a field, and we'd like to fill that with one of the file properties. So I'll select File, Properties, and with the Description tab selected, I'll enter the title My LibreOffice Writer Newsletter and select OK. And now you see that that field has been entered into the header of my first page. We're going to add a date to this header, so I'll place the cursor at the end of this line press the Enter key, and then from the menu bar, I'll select Insert, Field, Date. If I would like to edit the style of this date, I simply double-click on that field, and that opens up the Edit Fields dialog box. You notice that there are two options here. You can have a fixed date, a date that you enter today that doesn't change, or you can have a floating date. If you select this, every time you save a new version of this document, this date will be updated. Then you can select the format for your date. And there you see the reformatted date field. While we're focusing on the header for this page, let's modify the paragraph style that's used in this header. So I'll go to Paragraph Styles, and I will right-click on the Title Paragraph Style, and then select Modify. I'll select the Borders option, the Borders tab in the Paragraph Style, and notice this dialog box. It's reminding you that this is not only the Paragraph Style dialog box, 
but it's the paragraph style for the My Title paragraph. In the borders area, I'm going to use the top and bottom borders only, and I'm going to change the width of the line. I'm going to enter a, a line width of, well, let me actually highlight this and, and type in 1.50 and press tab for the new line width. Next, I will select the area tab, and I would like to modify this header background from color to bitmap. And in the bitmap section, I'm going to select the sky option. You notice that there's a large collection of different bitmaps that we could be using. But for this example, I'll select sky. And I'll do one more thing. I'll select font effects. I'll turn on outline and shadow. And I'm going to change the font color from automatic to not indigo, but blue. I'll say OK and view the result. For this newsletter, I'd like to have two columns instead of one large column. Using two columns can sometimes improve readability since people's eyes can track vertically easier than they can track horizontally and back again to find the same line. So I'm going to go to the page styles and I'm going to right click on my first page and then select modify. And in the page style, my first page dialog box, I'm going to select the two column option. If I hover, you can see that says two columns with equal size. You could manually make different size columns if you like. I'm going to accept the default spacing between columns of 0 0.20 inches, two tenths of an inch. And now you can see that my first page has two columns. I need to repeat this for my left page and my right page, so let me jump ahead and do that. Right click, modify, two columns, OK, right click, modify, two columns, OK. And now I've modified the page style of all my pages to have two columns. We need some text for our sample newsletter. And so rather than inventing some text, let's import text from the internet. And to do that, I'm going to open my web browser and I'm using Firefox as my web browser. You'll also see here that I have my web browser homepage set to the Bristol Village Computer Club homepage. You can find that at bvres.org and then click on the Computer Club tab. This homepage has quick access to a bunch of handy web links. And today I'm going to use Wikipedia. You can find Wikipedia by just doing a Google search. And here's the Wikipedia page. And notice that Wikipedia has a search box. And so for this exercise, I'm going to enter plant taxonomy into the search box. And that brings up an article. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the selection trick, shift select, and select some paragraphs here. I'm going to use the old copy trick. Hold the control key down, press the letter C, and that copies that text to the clipboard. Now I have to go back to my document, and I want to enter the text at the beginning of this document. However, you notice that the, the paragraph style right here is actually the default paragraph style. Before I enter the text, I would like to set the paragraph style to my text body style. So let me go over here on the sidebar, the paragraph styles, and double click on my text body paragraph. There's a reason for that. When I import text from some other document, I'm probably going to get whatever paragraph style was used in that document where I copied the text. But I would rather have that paragraph use my text body paragraph style. 
So by setting that style first, and then instead of just pasting, if I go to Edit, Paste Unformatted Text, it will actually use the My Text Body Paragraph Style rather than whatever the default paragraph style was that I would get if I just Control V and pasted it. Even though it's using the My Text Body Paragraph Style, it's added some extra paragraphs that I don't need. So I'm just going to select those and delete those extra paragraphs. I would like to have a heading for this section of the newsletter. I'm going to press Control and, and then press the Home key to jump to the beginning of the text. I'm going to press the Enter key to create a new paragraph there. And then I'm going to steal the words Plant Taxonomy, Copy, and Paste, Control V, to provide a heading. And the paragraph style for my heading should be Heading 1. So select that. I should have both of those words start with a capital letter. So I'm going to select that paragraph. I'm going to say Format Text and say Capitalize Every Word. And now I've added a heading that uses the Heading 1 paragraph style to this section of my newsletter. Well, that was so much fun. Let's go back to the internet and find some more text for our newsletter. But first, let's go to the end of the document, Control End, add a new line, a new paragraph. I'm going to make the new paragraph use the My Heading 1 style. And then I'll enter Carl Linnaeus for my new heading. I'll enter a new paragraph. Make sure that that's my text body paragraph style. And then I'll go to the internet. I'll go back to Wikipedia and find an article about Carl Linnaeus. So back in Wikipedia, I can enter Carl Linnaeus and do a search. There are several options here. I'm going to select this first one. Turns out that Carl Linnaeus had several different names. And this Carl Linnaeus, the one named Carl von Linné, is the focus of the article where I'll copy some more text for my newsletter. I'm going to select the first three paragraphs in this article by using Shift Select. And then I'll copy. I'll go back to my LibreOffice document and by the way, I'm using a, a trick that you can use to switch between windows. I'm going to hold the Alt key down and press the Tab key. And you see I have multiple windows open. And I'll just keep pressing Tab until I get to the window I'd like to use and release. And now I'm back to my Lesson 7 document window. And now, once again, with the paragraph style set to my text body paragraph, I'm going to say Edit, Paste, Unformatted Text. And once again, it gives me some blank paragraphs that I can go ahead and delete. You can copy and paste images the same way you copy and paste text. So I'll go back to the Linnaeus article. And this time, I'm going to right-click on the picture of Linnaeus. And I'm going to select copy image. That puts a copy of that image in the clipboard and I can go back to my LibreOffice Writer document and I'll place the text cursor somewhere anywhere in this first paragraph and then I'll paste the picture using the control V trick. Hold the control key down, press the letter V and there's the image added to my document. Well it's not quite the way I would like it to look. By default, when I pasted this picture, it centered it in my column. I would like to edit the location of this image. So I'm going to double click on the image, and that will open up 
the image dialog box. The first thing I'm going to do is select the type tab and I want to make sure that this keep ratio option is toggled on. If I don't toggle this on and then I change the width or height dimension it will not preserve the aspect ratio of the image. I'm going to change the width to one and a quarter inches or 1.25 inches. I want to make sure I'm anchoring to the paragraph and instead of centering the image I'm going to use the right side. I'm going to have this position be to the right side of my paragraph area. I would like to wrap the text around the image so I select the wrap tab and select before. You see there are several ways you can wrap text around images. So I'm going to use before and then I would like a little spacing between the text and the image so I'm going to set the left, right, top and bottom spacing to a tenth of an inch. I also want to add a border around the image. I'm going to select the set all four borders option and I'm going to add a shadow to the top left of the image. And there you see the result. The next section I'm going to add to the newsletter will be about the flower named Rudbeckia. So I'll go off to Wikipedia again and there is the Rudbeckia, also known as a black-eyed Susan. I'm going to select the text with a shift select trick again. But notice that the designers of the Wikipedia website put a little frame in their document and when I selected the text I copied something that's in a frame. Let's see what happens when I paste that kind of text into my newsletter. Once again I'll make sure that the paragraph style here is my text body paragraph and I will use again edit paste unformatted text and notice what happened to the text that was in that box. It's a little strange. LibreOffice did not know exactly how to deal with all of the text in that frame and for the purposes of this newsletter I don't really want that little context frame anyway so I'm just going to delete those paragraphs. I'll delete the other blank paragraphs. Columns automatically cause the text to flow to the very next column and here's another blank paragraph to delete and when I get to the end of a page the text flows automatically to the beginning of the first column in the next page which in this case is a my left page. Let's do a quick review of selecting and highlighting. So I'm going to go near the end of the text and I'm going to select the first sentence by triple clicking and then I'm going to use my highlighting tool and highlight that text with a light yellow color and then I'm going to locate the name Olaf Rudbeck. I'm going to make that bold and while I'm at it I'm going to copy the words Olaf Rudbeck because he's going to be the focus of the next text that I capture from Wikipedia. And since Olaf Rudbeck is going to be the next subject in my newsletter I will just add a new paragraph, copy Olaf Rudbeck paste him in the next paragraph and make that a heading one paragraph new paragraph my text body paragraph and I'll go off to Wikipedia and get an article about Olaf Rudbeck. I'll go back to the Wikipedia article on Olaf Rudbeck and fetch his picture. I'll right click on the picture copy the image Go back to LibreOffice Writer, place the cursor in the first paragraph, press Control V to paste the image. Then I want to resize and position it, so I'll 
double click on the image and I'm going to go to the type keep the ratio on I'm going to make this one and a half inches wide position to the right of the paragraph area with text wrapping around it spacing before the picture or before the image and add a border all four borders with a drop shadow and there I have Olaf Rudbeck added to my document. This time I would like to add a caption to this picture and to add a caption I'll right click on the image and from the pop-up menu I'll select insert caption and that opens the insert caption dialog box and you'll notice under properties that there are a number of categories that you can select these are words that will precede your picture in the caption so if you want to say illustration followed by your text you'll select that if you want to say drawing followed by the text you can do that you could even edit this and to create this book I've always used figures so I've changed the word illustration to figure in this example however I'm not going to use any prefix for this caption I'll just type the caption and once I've typed and edited my caption I can say OK I'll press the down arrow to jump back to the picture of Olaf Rudbeck and you'll see the caption is there now the caption has a default paragraph style I'm going to click away from that for a minute click into the text body and then I'm going to go back and select all the text in this caption and I want to change the font so in this example I think I'll use Arial and I'll use bold but not italic and I'll make the font a uh, 10 point type and I'll also center this text so there we've added a caption to a picture in our document now in our article about Olaf Rudbeck you may notice that it shows the name of his father Johannes Rudbeckius so we're going to go through this process again just for practice and select Johannes Rudbeckius maybe make him bold but we're going to create a new article about Johannes Rudbeckius so I'm going to jump ahead and you can follow along with this in the printed version of this lesson and I'm going to add an article about Johannes Rudbeckius and now that I've added the article on Rudbeckius I'm going to go down here and notice that one of his descendants is some guy named Alfred Nobel I'm sure you've heard of him so let's highlight Alfred Nobel make him bold and copy Alfred and let's make Alfred be the focus of yet another section of our newsletter so I've jumped ahead and, and added an article about Alfred Nobel and also inserted a picture for him following the instructions found in the printed version of lesson 7 I've gone ahead and added this new section at the very beginning of the newsletter with a heading and a paragraph so I'm going to add a paragraph right below the in this issue paragraph 
and now I'm going to insert a table of contents. From the menu bar I'll select insert, table of contents and index and then select table of contents, index or bibliography. This opens the table of contents dialog box and there are a lot of things to worry about when you get into a more advanced situation but for now let's just accept the default settings. There you see the table of contents added to the newsletter. If I position the text cursor on one of the paragraphs in the table of contents you'll see that it has its own particular paragraph style. Contents heading down here it says contents one those are paragraph styles and we can modify those styles when we inserted the table of contents into this document it used the default paragraph style for the heading line and that styles name is contents heading and it used the default setting for the paragraphs for the contents lines and that's called contents one it's possible for us to go back and create our own custom paragraph styles to use for the table of contents. But in this example, we're not going to do that. But we are going to modify the default paragraph styles. Now, I don't know if you noticed that while I was moving the mouse pointer around, whenever I moved it over this table of contents, a little message pops up. A little message pops up and it says, control click to follow link so for example if I would place that mouse pointer over the heading Rudbeckia and hold the control key down and click there we jump automatically to the heading one paragraph that's noted in the table of contents do control home go back to the top of the article by the way, if you create a PDF version of this document, and you can do that simply by clicking on the tool Export as PDF, if you do that, you will have a similar one-click option that the readers can use to jump to different heading one paragraphs in your document. Here's the trick to modify the paragraph formats used in the table of contents. I'm going to right click on one of the entries and then I'm going to select styles edit style and then the paragraph style dialog box will pop up specifically paragraph style contents heading dialog box will pop up. I'm going to select the alignment tab for that paragraph and I'm going to select the center option. Similarly, I'll do that on one of the contents listings. Right click, select styles, edit style, and in this case once again I'll set the alignment to center, but I would like to have a little padding before and after these listings. So I'm going to go to indents and spacing, and before the text, I'm going to enter a quarter of an inch, 0.25. And after the text, I'm also going to enter the same amount. Now watch what happens when I say OK. Now you see I've added spacing before and after those paragraphs. I think I'd also like to modify the font used for these contents listings. So again, right click, select styles, edit style. This time I'll go to the font tab and I'm going to choose a different font. I like the simple sans serif Arial font for these things. I'll choose Arial, I'll choose bold, and I think 10.5 for the, for the style. Now I'm going to slide this dialog box over a little bit so you can see what happens. Instead of selecting OK, let me try this font out by selecting Apply. And you see the effect right away. And if you don't like 10.5, if you'd prefer, let's say, 9 and Apply, 
you can see the difference. So you can do a little trial and error here with a supply tool until you find the setting that you prefer. When you have a table of contents in your document that's in, ahead of or before the actual entries, if you go and edit the body of the document, some things may move around. Some of these heading one paragraphs may change what page they're on. And so before you finish this document, as a last thing you do, you should always go to the table of contents area, right click, and then select update index. Well, that didn't make any changes in this example, but there are days that the changes will happen when you update the index. So keep that right click update index option in mind before you finish a document that includes a table of contents. When you look at the table of contents, it's a little misleading because it has a, a gray background color. Remember, that gray background color means that this is inserted text. This is not text you can edit, but it was inserted with a table of contents. We can actually change the background color for these paragraphs. We can right click on an entry, styles, edit styles, go to the area box, and for color, let's select light lime number four. And let's do the same thing for the contents listings. Right click, styles, edit style, go to area, color, and I'll use the same color for the contents listings as I have for the title. Not obvious here, we still have this unusual gray color. So what we can do to see what it really will look like is to use our old friend, the print preview toggle. And now you'll see it without the gray shading that's used for fields. Notice the same thing is true with the date field as well as the table of contents inserted field. And I'll close that preview or I can just toggle it again here. Now in the earlier lesson, you saw that we used the paragraph listing in the styles and formatting sidebar to modify paragraphs. We could right click on the paragraph style there and use the dialog box. Sometimes it's handier to select the paragraph style right in place, like we did for the table of contents. So in this example, I'm going to right click in my left page header, select styles, edit style, and I get the same dialog box that I would have gotten from right clicking in the styles and formatting sidebar. In the index and spacing tab, notice that I've added a quarter of an inch in f before the first line of text. I'm also going to go to borders and I'm going to set top and bottom borders only. Then I'm going to go to the area tab and choose the bitmap and use that same sky fill that I used for the header. And then I'll repeat that for the right page header. So I'll go to the right page header, right click, styles, edit style, and the order that I change these is not important. While I'm in this area tab, I'll change the bitmap to sky. I'll go to the borders tab, set top and bottom borders, and I'll go to indents because it's spacing, and I have 0.25 inches after the text, and I'll say OK. But I don't really like that. Once I put some color to the background of that paragraph, I get some white space after the background. The way to fix that is to simply go back and edit that style and remove the quarter inch spacing after the text. By the way, in the printed version of this lesson, it keeps reminding you to save your document frequently. 
And I'm sure that like most of us, you'll end up with a lot of blue bruises on your forehead by making changes and have something happen that you lose the changes. You should never spend more time between saves than you're willing to repeat. Now a brief mention of the topic widows and orphans. In the typesetting business, widows and orphans are lines at the beginning or the end of a paragraph which are left dangling at the top or bottom of a column, or they're separated from the rest of the paragraph. Most document designers do not like to see a page or a column begin or end with a single line of text, and LibreOffice Writer provides us a way with controlling widows and orphans, and there's also a way to control the hyphenation of words. So let's take a quick look at that. I'm going to place the text cursor in one of the My Text Body paragraphs, and then I'll right click, select Styles, Edit Styles, and in the paragraph style for My Text Body paragraph, I'm going to go to the Text Flow tab. And in the Text Flow tab, you can actually control hyphenation. You can make it automatically hyphenate at, with some number of characters at the ending or the beginning of a line. Also, there's options for orphan control and widow control. And what we have selected here is two lines. In other words, we want to have at least two lines at the beginning of a paragraph. The same with, with widows. Some of the people have trouble deciding whether orphans are at the beginning of a paragraph or the end of a paragraph or vice versa. Let's not worry about it. We'll just use two lines in both cases. And that does, if you watch the, the text move when we said OK, having those widows and orphans and hyphenation options on, it changes the flow of the text. For the next trick, we're going to change the document title. And you may recall that the document title was entered as a field in the File Properties area. So we're going to select File, Properties. Under Title, we'll change this text to Flower Power News. And then we'll say OK. Let me Control Home. And notice that because that was an inserted field, that's changed. We can also use that field for our headers and footers. So let's go to the left page header, select all that text, and replace it by saying insert field title. Let's do the same thing for the right page header. Select all the text, insert, field, title. And what power that is. You might have an 80 page document here and you might want to change the title and you might want to change all of the headers all at the same time, but using fields provides you with a lot of editing power. And if this is a newsletter that we put out every month or so, we might like to include the date in the headers and footers. No problem. We'll go to the header and after our inserted title field, we'll put a space and then we'll insert field date. I know that that pop down dialog box falls a little bit off your video screen, but you'll see it when you're working on the document. Then we can double click on that date field and we can make this date update every time we change the document and we can change the format we would like to use for that date field. We can repeat that process for the right side header And I'm going to try to remember to save this version of the document. Let's have a little fun and 
go back to the very first page and let's change the background color for this first page. And to do that, we're going to use our gallery. Remember the gallery tool over in the sidebar? I'm going to choose backgrounds and there's a whole list of backgrounds that are available. Now I have to warn you that some artists get carried away with this background business and I've seen professionally produced magazines, slick publications, where the artists have created some background and make the text almost unreadable. Sometimes they'll use a certain colored background where the text does not have a contrasting color and you have to be very careful about using a background. Also, if you have an older computer and you do not have a lot of memory or computing power, some of these backgrounds will slow down the editing process. In any case, I'm going to choose the sand light background from the gallery. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say insert as a background for my page and there it is. Now once again, I know that when I right clicked on that, some of this pop out fell off the edge of the page and you couldn't see it. You will see that when you click on it in your document. Well that adds a nice background color for the first page, but I would like to have a little padding between the beginning of the text and the margins here when that background color is in place. So to add a little padding, a little space here, I will right click on the paragraph and then I'll simply edit the style a little bit. I will go to indents and spacing and I'm going to add oh, maybe 0 0.08 before the text and also after the text. And I can always test that. I can always click on apply and see if I like that before I say OK. Let me do the same thing with the body text, styles, edit style, indent before and after. OK. So that, so with a colored background, that improves the text a little bit. And remember, when we've done a lot of editing here, before we finish, we need to make sure that our table of contents is updated. We don't want to have any of these headings not reflect the latest changes, so we'll right click and we'll say update the index. One last thing, let me jump to the end of this document and I'm going to add a paragraph or two, put a little space in there, and then I will insert a little text and it'll say this document was last edited I will insert a field, I'm going to insert a date field actually, and I'll edit the date field to make sure that it updates every time I change the document, and this time I'm going to use the full format for this date field. And it's kind of handy to be able to have that note if you're making different versions of your documents. Well, let's take a look at the whole document and see how it shapes out. We could use the toggle print preview option. I happen to have the cursor in the last page when I turned on my preview, but I have a tool here that allows me to go to either the previous page or to the beginning of the document. And this document, if I look close, has three pages so far. But when I start looking at the preview, I notice that this this doesn't fit right. I, I need to mess with this a little bit because I don't want poor Linnaeus to falling off the bottom of the page. So let me close the preview and go back and find Linnaeus. Well, I can even use this trick. I can use the control click to jump to Linnaeus. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of spare paragraphs in here until I get Linnaeus to the top of that page. And now when I look down, whoops, I have too much space here before Rudbeckia. So I'm going to be doing a little fine tuning there. Actually, 
I'm going to move this paragraph, I'm going to move this graphic down, whoops, a little too far, down to this paragraph. And since I moved him around, I want to make sure that he's justified to the right. And now let me scroll around a little bit more to see how things are going. Looks a little better. This time, instead of doing the page preview, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say, let's look at the multiple page view. And let me zoom out a little bit to see the multiple page view. And there I see all three pages. Because I'm using different styles for the left pages and the right pages, it's interesting to look at the book view. And the book view shows me the first page on the right side, which it normally would be in a book, and then it goes to the left page and the right page. Well, now that I've done that, let me go back to the normal view and, and zoom in and jump to the first page. Now that I've done all this, and I think I'm pretty close to finishing the document, and I want to get it ready for publication. And by the way, this looks a little different than yours will look because in the process of doing the step-by-step -step instructions in the lesson, there are some little details here that I've glossed over in the video version. You'll pick those up as you go through the, the instructions. If I'm going to share this document with other people, I could just print copies and hand them out, but if I want to share them over the internet, attach them to an email or go to a website with them, the best way to do it is by way of PDF files. And so this tool on the toolbar will allow me to export this document as a PDF file. And that way, if I send a copy of this document as an attachment by email to a friend, my friend does not have to have my version of LibreOffice Writer to be able to see the document. All they have to have is the ability to view PDF files and virtually every computer, no matter what operating system they're running, will be able to view PDF files. So my final step when I'm preparing a document for distribution is to create the PDF file.